Hi, I'm Ian Coxhead from University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I'm Sandy Siegel, president of ME Day and Company. And this is Talking Trade. So um, I have some interesting anecdotes to share this week um, with you, Ian, in regards to human rights issues, um, which we've talked about before, and forced labor. Um, it's really become a focus of customs and our administration. And um, there's always been a, a, um, a posting of companies that are um, considered to be in violation of fair trade rules and, and you know, fair labor laws. Um, but there's been several new orders that have come out. So in my own little world here in, in our customer base, I've had some goods held um, that include palm oil products out of Malaysia and cotton goods coming out of um, the Uyghur area in China, um, which has become, you know, a real focus. And so, you know, all of these alleged violations of child labor and forced labor um, in China and in that area, there's been a lot of attention in the media of, you know, the Muslim popula population and so forth. So it's, um, it's really eye-opening and I think, you know, it's hard for us to understand here in the US and, and so forth, but it, you know, it's a real issue. How much can we really impact that though here in the US and, and you know, how can, should we be making that part of our trade policy and negotiations with these countries and, and how do we do that really? Yeah, that's a really great question, Sandy. And there is no kind of easy, clean answer to that. I think that one way to approach that is to say, yes, uh, uh, attention to human rights and uh, other uh, issues not directly associated with trade is a legitimate part of international trade negotiations. And it's kind of hard to find uh, disagree strong disagreement with that these days. Uh, that said, international trade and human rights have got a, have had a relationship which is very complicated, to use the Facebook term. Um, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the constitutional elements of the World Trade Organization, WTO, are silent on human rights, uh, even though there have been quite a few international trade disputes that have referred to human rights uh, cases. Uh, there is a raft of international treaties that deal with human rights, but these don't overlap uh, with trade measures. Uh, at the same time, there's obviously been a really big upsurge in the last I don't know, couple of decades, uh, increasingly uh, powerful now, uh, from consumers demanding that human rights be uh, included in uh, discussions and negotiations over international trade. And interestingly, I guess uh, just this month, the, uh, uh, the very big uh, PR disaster confronted by Disney over its movie Mulan, which was partly filmed in Xinjiang in China, uh, really illustrates just how big that movement and how powerful uh, it has become. The uh, go ahead, yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you know, and and I think that's an example. And from the practical side of things, what I wholeheartedly, you know, believe that we have to do something about these violations of human rights. And yet, you know, how how does one police that from where we are? And you know, on the practical side of our my importers or you know Disney and and people unaware, it's. It's very difficult to, you know, I, I talk to my customers who feel they've done their due diligence in vetting their suppliers and in the burden is really on them in terms of US customs and in being able to, you know, prove their, their innocence and their suppliers innocence. And, you know, it becomes very challenging doing business with you know, some of these, these suppliers in these areas. So, um, Again, you know, just the challenge in trying to police that. I can imagine that's pretty difficult. Um, I will say that uh, the Europeans seem to have done much better at codifying some of these uh, principles into their trade relationships. Now, we know that most of the human rights complaints concern uh, developing countries, countries in the developing world. And the, uh, one of the approaches taken by the, uh, the EU has been to sign uh, agreements, uh, trade agreements uh, with those countries, which are bilateral agreements, ensuring access to the European market for products from those countries, but conditional on meeting a whole slew of uh, different uh, uh, provisions, which uh, cover human rights and a whole lot of other things as well, environment, labor, 
uh, and governance. And these are called everything but arms, uh, the EBA yes. uh, treaties that the Europeans signed with them, and also GSP plus, that's the generalized system of preferences with additional provisions for human rights and other uh, concerns. So there are ways to codify this and make the whole uh, system more predictable. Maybe that's a model for the US to follow. Yes, no, it's, it's um, you know, a good, a good strategy. I think um, obviously our economic support helps give us the strength to get their attention and, and hopefully get some attention to these, but certainly we need those governments to cooperate. And, and I think that's been some of the challenges. So, um, you know, it, it's an interesting topic for sure. Yeah, I mean, a couple of East Asian uh, exporters to the EU have really encountered uh, they've really had their feet held to the fire on this just in recent weeks. So the, the EU has really pushed hard on Cambodia uh, on human rights and labor law uh, violations. And since the EU is about 60% of the export market for Cambodia, they're taking that very, very seriously. So if you're caught up yeah. it, then maybe everyone uh, can uh, feel like it's more predictable and more manageable. No, well, I agree. Well, hopefully it would be, that would be a huge win, obviously, if, you know, we can find a way to help, you know, support those efforts. Absolutely. Because they, they're, they're real. And um, yeah, I, you know, you, I, I wonder how, how much some of these large organizations are, are aware, um, but right. silent. Well, I bet you, I bet your clients would like like to have a, a, a more predictable environment to work in, right? They would right. like to see Absolutely. some. Absolutely. Well, and and I'd like to think that they're all, you know, um, unaware of the of the circumstances. So, <laughs> and, and and I think it's fair to say they are. Absolutely. So. What a great topic! Another yes. one to watch in the future. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thanks, Ian. Likewise, Sandy. See you next week.